Good evening again and welcome to another edition of Constituency Watch here on Joy News, your election headquarters. Tonight we stay in the Ashanti region where another constituency is sending out some interesting signal. An otherwise safe seat for the new patriotic party, the seat fell to an independent candidate in 2008. And the independent candidate who is the incumbent MP is hoping to reclaim the seat again this December. Will he succeed? Join us with your views and comments via our short code 1760 or send us a message via WhatsApp on 0544-334-722. Or you can also send your comments by our face, uh, social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash Joy News, or on Twitter at Joy News on TV. My name is Nia Kofi Smartabi. Constituency Watch and your election headquarters are brought to you by Kind Ketsi of Star Ghana. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Election headquarters on TV, radio, and online. Election headquarters supported by Star Ghana and Infobox. Welcome back to Constituency Watch here on Joy News, your election headquarters. With me, Nia Krofi Smata, but the show is brought to you by the kindest sponsorship of Star Ghana. Well, tonight we're in the Busume Freho constituency and we are joined already on the line by two of the aspirants for that constituency. We have the NPP's Kojoche Frimpong. Pardon, uh, the MPP's Kojoche Frimpong, yes, that's his name, and then the NDC's Kwame Adakwa on the line already. So we'll get to speak to them, and hopefully we will be joined later by the independent candidate for that constituency, uh, Nana Yao Ofori um, Kregu. Uh, good evening, um, good evening, uh, Mr. Adakwa. Hello, Mr. Adakwa, if you can hear me. Good evening, and welcome to Constituency Watch. Okay, I understand we have rather Nana, um, Edward Nana of Yao of Rikwego. Good evening uh, to you, Honorable. Good evening, sir. Okay, thank you for joining us on Constituency Watch. Okay. All right, um, let me start by asking, um, you are the incumbent MP for the area, an independent no. candidate as, the, as a matter of fact. Um, one major thing we understand as a, a main problem for the constituency is the road network. Yeah. Most of the major roads, we understand, are still under construction. And yeah. the entire road network cannot be said to be in exactly a good shape. Uh, shape. What's happening to the road networks in that constituency? Yeah, the main trunk road from Bekwai through Esiwa mm -hmm. to Bonfa Junction has been under construction for the last five years. Okay. And that's the highway. Um, all the other roads in the constituency are what we call feeder roads. Okay. And as you know, in Ghana, feeder roads uh, have regular maintenance. They are never tired. Mm. Or they are hardly tired, if you like. Okay. okay. So, yeah, it's there's been, there's been going on for the last few years. Mm. But as the MP for the area, what efforts are you also making to ensure the speedy completion of these roads in the constituency? Because the uh, people in the constituency tell us it, it, it hampers their trading activities as they have to move from one part of town to the other uh, to transact business yes um as i say it was 
after I became MP that the uh, construction of the road from the Quiet to the Siwa was started, I, I lobbied for that through the then Minister, um, Dr. Richard Anani. Um, with regard to the feeder road, yes, I've been going there periodically, the, and now the we have our own leaders, like because the, the delegates, mm. not all of them were were uh, allowed to go. Some of them were disenfranchised at the end of the day, and um, that didn't help matters at all. I thought I'd been accepted into the MPP fold, so mm. I would have been allowed to vote myself. But when we got there and I made an attempt to vote, I was quickly told I'm not an MPP uh, member. So that's how come you went, uh, you, you didn't get the nod as the MPPs? That's correct. Yes. And that's for what, for 2012 or for 2008? Or for 2012, both cases? yeah. I lost the election by 17 votes, and 25 uh, delegates were not allowed to vote. So you can see that maybe if those guys had been allowed to vote, maybe the result would have been in my favor. Mm. So we quickly petitioned the national headquarters, but to date, there hasn't been any reply. Mm. Okay, so going into a race where you also have the NPP's candidate, a party you belong to, also in that race, how does that make you feel? Because he tells us that he's going to get 85% of the votes in the constituency. Do you believe him? Well, I, that's why I'm asking you. Uh, well, I, I contested with the same guy in 2008. Exactly. The same, the same guy, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I have to work very hard to beat him again. Because in 2008, the margin was quite close. You had 46.96%. He had 41.43%. That's right. Yes. And, and, and obviously, you know the dynamics have changed now because there are a lot more delegates than there used to be. So it's a totally new race. So I think we, we need to work very hard. Okay, let me come to you, Mr. Adakwa. Um, in 2004, when you contested um, Nanayao, you, uh, you had 17.30%, whilst yeah. he had 81.90%. That's quite a huge margin between the two of you. Yeah. What has changed? That, because that, you're telling that, me that, that now you are winning. What has changed between 2004 that, 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 and now? That, that, that time I was not popular as he was. Mm. Because M MPP was popular in the way from during that time. Okay. And now MDC is more popular. You see, 2004, Are you they sure? voted for MPP. Mm. 2008, they voted for independent, And now they are, going to vote, uh, they are going to vote for MDC. So I'm sure I'm going to win. What makes you think that the trend is the tide is going to change? Because this seat we are as as far as the trend shows is 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 more aligned towards the NPP and of course of which Nana Yao is a member. Oh Nana Nana Yao was a member of NPP. Okay, was during two thousand four. Mm -hmm. And two thousand eight he was not uh, he was not a member and he won by independent and now you see he's defending. He's defending. The party yes. is defending from mm -hmm. MPP to independent. And he's coming to end this. You see, and because of uh, the better Ghana agenda, the selection of people are feel are feeling. You see? Mm. The potential projects, how we are managing to uh, get some projects, interventions and so on and so forth. And how we are marketing the money from. I know people have got the feeling of uh, better Ghana than they hope that if we push one and that the parliament, then it will be able to see by all. Okay. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Before I let you go, though, both of you, I, I just want to find out how, what your plans are for ensuring a peaceful um, poll in your constituency. Let me start with oh, you, my, Honorable. My, my, my brother, even. Um, uh, my, my colleague, uh, my brother has a uh, special aid. That's Mr. Mankwa. I called Mr. Mankwa yesterday mm. and talked to him that they should have a peaceful different campaign. I even called Mr. T. I went to Mr. T. from home on Sunday to okay. tell him that I am not the security uh, director chairman. I don't want any. Uh, uh, campaign of resource. Okay. So I invited him to my office. I told him the same thing. Mm. And I'm waiting for the Nile. Okay. I called him about this when he said he will be coming in the next week. I was still talking to have a peaceful. I'll, I'll be there on Monday, but before before you go, 
Um, I just want to say that, you know, Busmi Frehun was a very deprived constituency, part of Bekwai, and Busmi Frehun, under my MP ship, has seen a rural bank, it has seen a new district, it has a secondary school, we've done uh, insurance for over 4,000 people, so I think the people are highly elated, and I think that they will repose their confidence in me. Okay, that, but... That's why I'm telling you, that's why I'm telling you, uh, you have completed uh, the, the time of the way. Okay, now, now, <laughs> let, let's take your uh, plans for ensuring a peaceful poll. My plan? Yes, for ensuring that the, the polls in Busumi Farum, for instance, are peaceful. Oh, I mean, Busumi Farum is a peaceful um, constituency anyway, but I've, I've been appealing to the chiefs, which I haven't finished. I'm um, appealing to the chiefs to also participate in the process to ensure that everything is free and fair. But with regard to security, I think the DC is in control of the DICEC, so he has to organize them as well. Okay. All right. Um, I'll have to say a big thank you to both of you. Um, yeah. You heard me speaking to Edward Nanaya of Free Kuregu. Kuregu. Thank you for the correction, yeah. Koregu, who is the independent candidate for the Busumifreho constituency. He actually is the incumbent MP for that area as well. And earlier also you heard me speak to Kwame Adakwa. He is the DCE for Busumifreho district and also the NDC's uh, candidate for that constituency. So we'll have to say a big thank you to both of them. Thank you to you too. Uh, thank, thank, you. You, thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Now, um, the race is on and is... The race is on for the seat, which is traditionally considered a safe seat for the new patriotic party. But the safety of that seat is now threatened as, um, as it stands now because an independent candidate has won the seat and he's bent on recapturing it. And as you heard me speak also, the district chief executive is in this race. Who emerges the ultimate leader of the Busume Frehong constituency? Well, we'll get to discuss that Peter Ankoma of the Daily Dispatch is here with me in the studio. As always, good evening, Peter. Good evening to you, my brother. But first, let's watch a profile of the constituency. When we come back, we'll talk to Peter, and hopefully we'll get to speak to the MPP's candidates as well for that constituency. This is Constituency Watch. The Busume Frehun district, with its capital at Asiwa, was one of the districts created by former President J. Kufour and inaugurated on February 29, 2008. 80% of the population is made up of farmers, with the remaining 20% engaged in other professions. The constituency has seen major growth in the area of infrastructure development, such as the construction of school blocks, connection of some communities to the national electricity grid, and the sinking of boreholes, among others. This structure, which is still under construction, when completed, will accommodate the Busome Frehun District Assembly. But in spite of the gains made in expanding infrastructure, Roads in the constituency are still not in the best of shapes. Some of the major roads are still under construction. This, residents say, affects their daily activities as they travel from one community to the other to transact business. The constituency has also been an active bed for political activities, serving as a stronghold for the new patriotic party since 1996. The NPP's Gabriel Yao Amoa won the seat in 1996 with 9,431 votes. During the 2004 elections, Edward Nanayao Ufurikuregu won the seat for the NPP with 16,209 votes, representing 81.9%, whilst the NDC's candidate Kwame Adakwa polled 3,420 votes, representing 17.3%. But the voting pattern in the constituency took a different turn in 2008 as the then incumbent Nanaya Ufurikregu lost the NPP's primaries to Kwejo Che Frempong. He, however, contested the seat as an independent candidate and won with 9,140 votes, representing 47%. The NPP's candidate, Kwejo Che Frempong, thus settled for 8,064 votes, or 41.4%, with the NDC's Isiedu Anthony Kennedy managing 2,000. 189 votes or 11.2 percent. Edward Nanaya Ufurikregu is still in the race for the 2012 polls. This time again, he comes up as an independent candidate after he failed for a second consecutive time to get the MPP's nod to be its parliamentary candidate. He will be facing Kwejo Che Frempong for the second time at the polls. So, will the constituents go for an independent candidate again? 
The NDC and MPP aspirants do not think so. The NDC's candidate, Kwame Adakwa, says he will be the toast of the voters as they no longer vote along party lines but on issues of development. You know, we were voting on uh, uh, this uh, party line. But as of now, everybody knows the best way to live is to live in an environment which is developed. And how massive we are taking the developmental projects shows that everything is going to change. You know, at first we were saying she was a terminal trouble. But as of now, people don't want to say she was a terminal trouble because they know we have developed so many communities that they can even even venture to talk about she was a terminal trouble. So it's likely we, are, we have a brighter chance. He says he will be campaigning on the Better Ghana agenda and is also promising to market the constituency. I know at least uh, uh, every community in the district have got something from the Better Ghana agenda. So I'm going to preach the gospel according to Better Ghana agenda. And I know we will succeed. I want to market this from especially the lake side. You know, we have the uh, lake side. Uh, the, our side of the lake side is so fine that uh, it needs to be improved for tourist attraction. So even the last time I started uh, uh, something like, a, uh, you call it Easter pool party, lake party over there, and it was massive. So I want, my, I want to voice out what Bosome Frenho is capable to do and to market Bosome Frenho. Mr. Dakwa is hoping to capitalize on the dwindling fortunes of the NPP in the constituency to annex the seat. Formally, nobody can venture the seats, but uh, 2008, independent candidate captured it. And now, now we are going to capture it because it was descending, their, their, their vote were descending, they are, were coming down, coming down, and now we are going to improve upon, on ours. Upon what I've said, we are going to improve, and I know we are, we are going to win the elections massively, and I'm going to be a parliamentarian. But the NPP's candidate, Kwejo Che Frempo, maintains the seat is for the NPP, stressing he will secure over 85% of the votes. The seat is basically NPP. That is a fact. And uh, the NDC man, Honorable Adakwa, knows that it's an NPP seat. It was just a misunderstanding that occurred during those days that uh, an independent candidate had a chance. But that is basically NPP. It appears Mr. Frempong has uncovered what accounted for his defeat in 2008, as he says he has taken steps to address those issues. Uh, people couldn't understand uh, the difference between uh, incumbent. He was, an, you know, Honorable Furukoku was an incumbent MPP candidate before he went to, uh, uh, be, before he became independent. Now they thought. MPP and, and, and independent card were the same. As he told them, he was just going to win and then join the MPP. In fact, the people were confused. They didn't know the difference between an independent candidate and a party candidate. Uh, they were misinformed. So now we've put in a lot of education. People are now aware when they are going to vote, who to vote for and who not to, or, or who to vote out. Mr. Chaifrimpon says his focus will be on the rural communities. And MPP party, you know, uh, they are much concerned about the rural folk. And I think uh, uh, it, it will fit into our own agenda. For now, it remains to be seen if the Busume Frenho constituency seat will fall back to the NPP or will be taken up again by an independent candidate. Okay, so that's the profile of the Busume Frenho constituency for you. Uh, now let's come to the studio and let's touch base with Peter, who is here. Peter, you had the NDC's candidate and the independent candidate for the constituency. Sure. What, what do you make of, okay, first, the discussion we had with them, both of them thinking or are sure they are winning. The MPP candidate also telling us in the profile that he's sure of 85% of the votes. Well, it's interesting listening to them. But before I come to that, let's uh, refresh our minds to about the 
the fact that um, this particular constituency, mm. you know, we are saying is safe. Yeah. You remember yesterday we talked about um, out of 230 constituencies, mm -hmm. uh, about 180 are safe seats. Yeah. And now it's been increased to seven, 275, so we, we are not too sure of mm. how the actual figure. And out of the uh, 180 seats that we are saying is safe, it's safe because the electorates there vote uh, mainly on party lines. Of course, they, some of them will vote based on some developmental issues mm. or some uh, appeal or some ethnic or personality or math yeah. stuff. But it's basically uh, majority of the voters do vote on party lines okay and it, it is because of the fact that like i said yesterday the one most of the electorate feels that they they were born into the political parties mm -hmm. and so for instance so that's why when you go to for instance in the Ashanti region where the mpp can boast of uh, a lot of votes or mm -hmm. where they it's referred to as mpp yeah, world bank, bank. <laughs> Most of the people there feel that the party, mm -hmm. some of them feel that they were born into the MPP party and so they must support it, whoever okay. is their candidate or whoever is their leader. Mm -hmm. The same applies to the voter within that you will always find people also believing that they were born into the, the NDC. NDC and so we always want to also vote for the party. Mm -hmm. There are others too that for some historical or for some reasons believe that they are not more, more like accepted in other political parties. And that they are respected, or they are, they feel much more comfortable in some other parties, as in, in the case of uh, MPP and Ashanti region. Some believe that oh, they they will not be they will they feel comfortable being with, or mm -hmm. for some historical reasons believe that they should be in MPP. Yeah. The same applies to the voter region. And the last one being that is safe because the party was formed around around them. Mm -hmm. They feel that they own the party. Yeah. The for me, the, the the root of the party is from the those areas, and so they must support the party. Mm. Those are mainly the reasons why people will always want to base uh, on party lines to vote for some politi some political party or some candidates mm. from those areas. So this particular one, uh, what happens is that because it is safe for the MPP, the internal elections, mm -hmm. what we call primaries, yeah. are usually very intense. Very intense that when leadership is not able to resolve the aftermath of the elections, the differences and conflicts, it's, it's the tendency is that those who feel aggrieved will just decide to contest as an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. And by so doing, and I, I remember telling you yesterday, by so doing, those candidates, those independent candidates, must be able to convince the and core supporters yeah. of the party mm -hmm. that they are coming out of out, out from that yes, they've been given a raw deal. Yes, they have been treated fairly. Indeed, there were some sort of um, unfairness in the elections, mm -hmm. and by so doing, some of them feel it feels like oh, let's then let's teach the party some lesson mm -hmm. for treating you unfairly or for some reason. Let's also vote support you for fighting a good cause. Okay, so can we then say that was what worked in the favor? And that of worked for the uh, Nana Kuregu. Uh, Nana Kuregu in two eight elections. Yes. Okay, and this time around, uh, per our work and signals we are getting, it looks like. He's not going to be lucky this time because, for mm -hmm. instance, like he, he himself said, that at, at the recently organized primaries, he was told not to be given a chance to vote because mm -hmm. they said he wasn't a member of the party. But the point is that if they regarded you not to be a member of the party, why then did they allow you to contest? To contest and you also place. allowed yourself to um, to be thinking, should I say? In quote for granted by saying that oh okay even though they are saying that i'm not a member of the party and for that matter they won't allow me to vote mm -hmm. you still went ahead and contested and lost mm -hmm. you see the signal we are getting is that the counter um argument against this very point he raised mm -hmm. this evening for instance is that uh, he's just been a bad loser he lost the other time and because you know he didn't get it the second time he stated he tasted power and so he's just trying to find reasons to also go again as an independent candidate. Mm. So some of these things might work against him this time around. Okay. But like we said, let me give you some. Um, in 1996, mm -hmm. for instance, the MPP won the constituency. Mm. 
with a margin of victory of 16,209. That is 80.7%. Yeah. The NDC candidate who is um, Mr. Kwame Adakwa. Mm -hmm. In, no, 1996, no. 96, 96 candidate was, was Osupra, Osupra Abibio. Abibio, yeah. You know, he was uh, the 1992 mm -hmm. member of parliament. You know, 1992, the MPP uh, boycotted elections. Exactly. And, so, yeah. and so he contested in 1996 and lost to Mr. Gabriel Yao Yao Amwa Amwa. Mm -hmm. of the MPP yeah. with a margin of victory of 2,541. Mm -hmm. And it was because of some incumbents Incumbent, uh, incumbency advantage okay. that the NDC candidates got. Okay. And of course, because of the Great Alliance, mm -hmm. the CPP NDP, candidate, yeah. MPP Alliance, the CPP contested. And so yeah. the candidate also sort of got some votes from the constituency. Mm -hmm. In the presidential, of, of course, the MPP won it with a margin of victory of 2,810. Mm -hmm. But by 2,000 elections, mm -hmm. the, the wind of change, you know, that people felt that the NDC had had quite a longer chance to rule or to govern and that they needed to give way to another government. Mm. That sort of also worked against the party the more. Mm. And so Mr. Gabriel Yao Amwa of an MPP in the parliamentary elections again he still won the won seat. the seats yeah. with a margin of victory of five thousand eight hundred and sixty two. Mm. Realized that the margin of victory has been increasing. Yeah. The NDC candidate then 2000 elections, Mr. Kweku Ajiman, Ajiman. Mm -hmm. pulled 4,872 votes. In the presidential, of course, again, then this, uh, the MPP won the constituency in 2000 mm -hmm. with a margin of victory of 7,301. Mm -hmm. But by 2004 elections, this time Mr. Edward Nanaya of Kuragu came mm -hmm. in and won the seat for the MPP. Mm -hmm. Of course, the issue of continuity, you know, in 2004, yeah. mm -hmm. there was this uh, positive change, Chapter 2. Chapter 2, yeah. And that sort of also helped the MPP. Mm. And of course, in 2004, there was a high voter turnout. When okay. you check in yeah, 2000. It was 91.6. 91.6, yeah. yes. In, but it in dropped to 79 point, point something. 84 in, in yeah, 2008. 2008 yeah. And so because it's a safe seat for the MPP, the more the people come out to vote, the, the more, higher the, the higher. Oh, okay. Mm, sure. And so if you check the votes that the MPP and their candidates mm. got in 2004, mm -hmm. Nana Yao Ofoi Kuragu pulled 16,209. Mm -hmm. As against the NDC and the candidate, Mr. Kwame Adaka, 3,420. Mm. The margin of victory this time was 12,789. Yeah. The MPP, of course, was united then. Mm. In the presidential elections, again, the MPP and former President Kufo won the constituency. Mm -hmm. He polled 16,209, uh, the same as what the parliamentary candidate got. And yeah. the uh, NDC and the also late was president, the 3, president was 320 votes. The margin of victory again was still 12,889. Mm. Yeah. But by 2008, mm. the MPP contested the constituency with a divided front. Okay. And there was also a reduced sort of turnout. Mm -hmm. Like you rightly said, yeah. 79. And by that time, Nanaya had also gone independent now. Independent. So all those things worked against the party. Mm. And the Nana Yao uh, Ofori Kuragu mm. then had a good cause to convince or good reasons to suggest to the MPP core support base that okay. he wasn't treated fairly. And mm. so they felt much more of let's help him out. Okay. He's, been treated, he's been given a raw deal. Mm. So, and again, the Alan Nana sort of. Mm -hmm. Faction, of course, in all political parties, you find some factions yeah. within, or even in some small organization, you will, you will find some factions. One trying to believe that this faction should go, one also trying to push the other faction, and so those divisions quite clearly is not strange in political party formation mm -hmm. or organization. Yeah. But in 2008, MPP and their leadership couldn't manage that sort of factionalism or should I say division well. Mm -hmm. And so that also worked against them. Okay. In fact, that it was based on all those reasons that made that huge uh, loss of votes, almost 200,000 votes, in terms of the votes that they lost in the presidential elections 
in 2008 election. You know, I told you the issue about apathy, mm -hmm. that when you are not able to resolve internal wranglings mm. and your supporters feel like they, they've not been treated fairly, two things do happen. One, they may decide not to even turn out to vote at all because exactly. they, 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 they think that someone they else will definitely will, vote, will vote for you. And since it's and your so, safe seat, that's so it. So just take your part. Take if you are in charge, just mm -hmm. go ahead and mm. do whatever you want. So they will not turn out to vote. Okay. Forgetting that, if they don't turn out to vote, that is uh, a minus yeah. in the presidential side. Mm. Remember the, in the presidential, presidential elections, the consequence is just uh, one. Mm -hmm. And so, if your core supporters do not turn out to vote, that, of course, will work against the presidential. Okay. And secondly, some of them will also believe that some of the voters mm. will also believe that, oh, less, the, in terms of the party, that's what I'm, I'm yeah. explaining, we also believe that let's go and teach our party leadership some lessons. Let's okay. vote for a different candidate mm. and probably maybe vote for uh, the, our presidential uh, take it that they, they believe that the, uh, the, the, the candidate mm. is not involved in the those internal divisional wranglings that do happen. But looking at the way things are coming out from Busume Ferron, does it look like they are going to go skirt and blouse again this time? Per our signals and our information we are picking, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like that now, okay. because they think that uh, one. Of course, Mr. Ofori Kragu himself mm. knows that uh, the constituency is an NPP uh, Strong. stronghold. Yeah. And so when he even won the seat and went to parliament, he himself is an NPP mm -hmm. uh, member. He joined his colleagues well, on the minority the side, mm. you see. But he himself agreed and rejoined the party, sort of. And so that was the reason why he contested the party's primaries. Okay. So the fact that he, he contested the party's primaries mm -hmm. should quite clearly tell you that oh he's he's been um, he's rejoined the party or he's been accepted back. Mm -hmm. But if like he's saying what he's saying is true that he was prevented from voting because and twenty five others. And twenty five others because they claim he wasn't a member of the party and he didn't raise an issue or about it and allowed it to happen. The court supporters believe that oh this time we are going with the party because um, the reasons he's giving are in mm. terms of the reason he's citing to convince them are not that strong enough okay. to sway them to his side. Okay. But will, will issues of development also matter? Because from the profile we watched, it looked like the constituency is pretty much well developed. Yes. You see, in most of the safe seats, what, what happens is that because the members of parliament believe that, oh, the people will always vote for them. Mm. Only few people do well in terms of facilitating or lobbying uh, development, developmental yeah. projects for the constituents. Mm. But in this case, uh, and of course, development or issues do uh, there's uh, uh, work out for uh, do work out in some of these constituencies. Mm -hmm. But in terms of percentage, as in number of people who vote based on developmental yeah, issues, yeah. are just small. Uh, okay. to determine who wins the seat or constituency at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Because I was trying to understand how it so happened that this, in spite of all the developments that mm. Nanaya Okwegu has managed to bring about mm. his popularity or per your, your, your work in the area, sure. he doesn't seem to be in the lead. It, because, yeah. you know, usually this is what the electorates will be looking out for. So mm. once they have an MP who has been able to develop, then ideally it looked like that person definitely would get another chance again to come back. Yeah, it's purely because of the uh, issue of safe seats or the matter of uh, people voting on party lines. Okay. That because they believe that they sort of own the party or they are part of the party's uh, mm. formation, they owe their allegiance to first to the party. Okay. And not to individuals. Mm. They, be they believe that as an individual you will come and go, but the party should be there. But Kwame uh, uh, Adakwa is telling us that the, the people are no longer voting along party lines, but rather on issues like development. Um, by December 9th, we will see whether what he's mm. saying is the truth or not. But the bottom line is that I think what's in, at the back of his mind, what he will be trying to do mm. is just to uh, reduce the margin of victory or mm. at best try and capitalize on the division within the party, even though it's not that big or huge okay. now, and then win some vote for his um, 
uh, his party, the NDC. Mm. Okay, let me let me read some of your messages that have come through to us already. Um, this one from Manche Bruce the second in Takari says, Ni, the conditions that pushed Ofori Kregu to contest as an independent candidate in 2008 mm -hmm. no more exist. Sure. His condition, his actions after losing in the primaries smack of greed and cynicism. Mm -hmm. The MPP will wrestle the seat back come December 7, 2012. Well, okay, it looks okay. like almost like, what you're saying. Sure. This one says, Ni, I know definitely the independent candidate will win the seat for MPP. The independent winning for MPPP, okay. And he is you win and rejoin the party. <laughs> <laughs> and he is the NDC not breaching the laws when a certain DCE who is still at post and still contest is still contesting for the Busume who seats. That's James from Atibie Kweu. Well, James, I did ask him that question. He said he had not resigned. And his reason he explains is that he has not received any directive from his boss um, to resign as DCE to contest the election. So once he hasn't received any directives from his boss, he has, he's still staying on in office. Um, this one says, Honorable Kwame Adakwa and Ofori Kwegu must go. They've done nothing to be given the mandate. Yeah. The Honorable DCE told Enyaso, I hope I got to correct people, that he is not the one to make their road, which is said to have been created by the NPP. We, the people of Busumi Fraho, will vote for Honorable Frimpong. Okay. Um, that is, you, well, you didn't add your name, but that is your message also. Uh, this one, quite a lengthy one for a WhatsApp message. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's from Jim. Um, Jim says, we had an overusage of. Oh, okay, this is quite different from what we're talking about, but well, you're saying you're the CEO of WhatsApp, well, we'll get, we'll get to talk about your issue later. But let me come back to you before we wrap up uh, on this. Um, Busome Freho, from the look of things, you're saying the um, independent would not likely, is not likely to, to win, win again. again. The NDC candidate is sure he will make inroads, but do you still believe because it's a safe seat for the MPP, the MPP, the MPP will is a, is make the best. But it's more, more, much more likely to win the seat this mm. time around. What can, is it easy to tell what the margin will be like? Because it was quite close in 2008. Yes, yes you are right. In 2008, for instance, the MPP Kwejo Che Frempong mm. pulled 8,064, representing 41.43%. Mm. The NDC and their candidate, C.A.D.U. Anthony Kennedy, 2,189. Mm -hmm. Representing for eleven point two five percent. The independent candidate Nanaya Ofori nine thousand hundred and forty. The margin of victory between the independent candidate and MPP was one thousand and seventy six. Mm -hmm. The margin of victory between the NDC and MPP was five thousand eight hundred and seventy five. But you see, the, the 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 point is that when you check Mr. Adakwa's history, mm -hmm. you will find out that he's sort of a bit popular than his party in the in the in the constituency. He actually admitted that sure that he wasn't popular Beca then in two thousand four, sure. but he now is. And even over time, mm. because even in two thousand and four, he did he did well than his party in NDC. Mm. He pulled um, he got seventy percent okay. and the party sixteen percent. He pulled three thousand four hundred and twenty as against three thousand three hundred and twenty. Mm. And now he's been, he's been made um, the uh, the chief, chief executive. Yeah. He's helped some people within the constituency, uh, within the constituency, and so there are there are much more people who want to sort of pay him back by mm -hmm. voting for him. Okay, and we, yeah, just no okay. Let me give you thirty seconds. We but need to uh, we now. believe that all those things are just not enough to win the seat for the NDC. Okay. At best, he can just try and uh, just get mar increase the their margin of margin, victory. Or okay or get more more vote for President Mahama okay. in the case of the presidential elections. All right. So uh, this last message from Papaya says, with or without developing our constituency, we will still vote for NPP and Nanado. Mm. That's 
obviously goes to affirm what Peter says about safe seats. So that's, that's our show for tonight. My name is Nia Kofi Smatabi. Many thanks to my guest in the studio, Peter Ankoma, Deputy Editor of the Daily Dispatch newspaper. On the phone, we had Kwame Adakwa. He's the NDC's aspirant for the Pusumifra Hall constituency. And then we spoke also to Edward Nanaya of Fuekwego, who is the independent candidate for that constituency and the incumbent MP. Unfortunately, we couldn't reach um, Kwejuche from Pong, the MPP's aspirant even though he had agreed to speak to us. But we'll be back tomorrow with our final show for the week. Until then, good night.